today we'll be making some alkaline vegan mashed puro bananas and gravy. Let's get started. For this recipe, I'll be using 10 burro bananas, but you can use however many you want. Starting off, we're going to cut off the top and the bottom of the banana, then slice down the skin and peel it off. Make sure you're using unripe burro bananas, not ripe ones. So, I missed my alkaline vegan apple pie recipe upload, and I uploaded an Instagram story explaining the reason behind the mess, so if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know. Now we can use the bananas as is, but if you know me, you know I like to take it to the next level. Cut your peeled bananas in half. Since alkaline vegans don't eat potatoes and we're imitating potatoes, we're going to have to remove the core or the seeds of the bananas. Don't worry about it, I'll show you how to remove the seeds. Slice each half of the banana lengthwise to reveal the seeds, then using your knife, carve out a V-notch and remove the seeds. Here you go. By doing this, you can closely match the color and the texture of mashed potatoes. A faster and easier method is to carefully cut out four sides from the banana while leaving the core and the seeds intact. This is definitely a labor of love and it's not for everyone. I'll fast forward to the end and show you the final result. Let's prep these. I'm sure most of you thought I was going to throw the core away. I'm definitely not doing that. I ended up making them into burro banana fries. If you haven't seen that recipe or don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Place a pot on medium high heat. In my case, I'm using a Dutch oven, not for any particular reasons. Fill up your cooking vessel with some water. There's no set measurement, you just need enough to cook your bananas. Add your burro bananas to the pot. Cover and cook for 30 minutes or until they're very soft. After about 30 minutes, check your bananas and they should feel soft to the touch. If they're not soft, return them and boil until soft. If your bananas are soft enough, dump the water through a strainer. Add your cooked bananas to a large bowl. On the right flank, I'm coming through with some sea salt which you have to adjust to taste, some papaya seeds which is definitely optional, and some onion powder which is also optional but will make a huge difference. Finally, I'll be following it with some avocado oil, about 5 to 6 tablespoons. The next step is to put on your smartwatch because you're about to do some hand workout. Using a masher, mash the bananas until you get the consistency of mashed potatoes. You can save some of the cooked banana water and add some tablespoons if needed. When you're done, cover and store in a warm place. Let's make the gravy. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you're not following me on Instagram, you're definitely missing out on a lot. We're going to start with a huge bunch of oyster mushrooms. And you can use as many mushrooms as you like. Separate the mushroom petals from the stalk. These are what we need, but we're going to put them to the side for now. I rinsed off my mushrooms because I want them to soak some water. you see why soon. Let's move on to our portobello mushrooms. You could cut off the stem if you like, but the main goal is to cut them into thick slices. You really don't have to slice them. If you want to, you can keep them whole as well. Next, we're going to roughly slice some onions and there's no need to be fancy with it. Set your onions to the side and let's work on our fennel. For the fennel, we're not going to use the bulb this time around. We only need the stalks. While the mushrooms are acting as a meat replacement, the fennel stalks will be acting as a celery replacement. Separate the fennel stalks from the bulb, then remove the fronds along with their stems. So here is the bulb, and as I mentioned earlier, we don't need it for this recipe, but you can use it if you want to. Now that the fennel stalks have been cleaned up, we can cut them into bite-sized pieces. If you can't find a fennel, or you don't know what a fennel is, feel free to skip it. That's what they look like, we can set them to the side for now. Place a pan on a stove set to medium-high heat. Add anywhere between 3 to 5 tablespoons of avocado oil. Once the oil is hot, throw in your oyster mushrooms. 
spread them apart so they're all touching the surface. Using a grill press or something heavy, press down on the mushroom so they'll release the juices they soaked up from being rinsed earlier. Drain the mushroom broth in a bowl, then return the pan to the stool. Now we're going to press down and let it cook for about 5 to 10 minutes or until it turns brown. Once it turns brown or golden brown, flip it over, add a pinch of salt, press it and let it cook for 5 to 10 minutes. Once they're ready, move them to the front of the pan, add a touch of avocado oil, then throw in your portobello mushrooms. Add a pinch of sea salt and a pinch of winter savory. After about 3 to 5 minutes, mix it all together and it's ready to serve. So, we cooked the mushrooms first to make some fun for the gravy. This looks so good, I could eat it right now and I barely added anything to it. Let's set this aside and we'll come back to it soon. In the meantime, return your pan to the stove and drop the heat to medium heat. Now this is the fun I was talking about earlier. It'll add some major umami flavor to your gravy. Add a touch of avocado oil to replace butter, then throw in your onions. Next, throw in the fennel stalks we cut up earlier. Mix it all together and let it cook for 5 minutes. Mix it continuously so you don't burn your onions. Once it's ready, move it all to the back to make room for your flour. Add a quarter cup of white kamut flour, then begin to mix immediately using a whisk. Mix with the oil until totally combined, but don't stop stirring. This is the stage where you determine the brownness of your gravy. Once you feel it's brown enough, you can mix it all together. This could easily burn, so don't stop stirring. Once it's brown enough to your liking, you can move on. Add about 2 cups of water to the mushroom broth we made earlier. Now add the combined broth and water to the pan. Once the pan has been deglazed, we're going to add our seasonings. As always, we're starting with the sea salt, add just to taste. Next, we're adding a quarter teaspoon of winter savory. Add a quarter teaspoon of thyme and make sure you keep stirring. After a few minutes, your gravy should start to thicken up. Bring it down to low heat and let it cook for 10 to 15 minutes while stirring occasionally. Once your gravy is done, add about 3 to 5 tablespoons of coconut aminos, mix and take it off the stove immediately. Alkaline vegans are not supposed to heat up coconut aminos. I don't mind heating it up, so I'm good. Now you could do two things, you could pass it through a strainer or you could let it cool down and you could blend it all together. Either way is fine. Blending it is easier than passing it through a strainer, so rather than show you both methods, I'll just show you how to pass it through a strainer. As for the leftover vegetables, you can serve it on the side or you could compost it. Do whatever you want with it. To stop it from forming a skin, you need to stir it until you serve it. When it comes to gravy, you really can add whatever seasonings you want. Anyway, this is how I'll serve you the mashed burro bananas if you come to my house and you're not subscribed to my channel. First, I'm going to put it in a piping bag with a star tip. Next, I'm going to squeeze it out slightly to make sure it's unobstructed. Thirdly, I'll begin to serve it real slowly while never breaking eye contact. Once I'm done, I'm going to serve it to you while maintaining eye contact. Finally, I'm going to dump the gravy all over the mashed burro bananas and walk away while maintaining eye contact. On the other hand, if you're a subscriber, I'm going to serve you in a warm bowl. And not just that, you're going to get some of my sauteed mushrooms with the broth. Yeah, I said that. All jokes aside, although this is an alkaline vegan recipe, it comes really close to the real thing. Now, take a closer look at this before I pounce on it. I mean, for a healthy meal, an alkaline vegan meal, it is delicious. Let me know in the comment section if you want the subscriber or non-subscriber version. Thanks for watching.